one of the tests I wanted to do is to see if a vacuum pump, i.e. our Super Evac from Yellow Jacket, or we have a field piece vacuum pump as well, can pull a vacuum using one of our hose sets, either True Blue or Appian, on a leaking evaporator coil or leaking component and pull it down to under 500 microns and see what happens on the decay. If the leak is small enough, will it kind of mask itself? Well, that's what I want to find out. So I have this sweet old coil of mine and first thing we have to do is confirm that it leaks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it under pressure. We're going to put it in a little bit of a bath and we're going to see if it leaks. Now that I have the stub braised shut here, I'm going to pressurize this coil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the yellow jacket hose. I'm going to go ahead and hook up my tank of nitrogen. And we'll blast a little bit of nitro in there to pressurize this coil. And I have to put the valve core back in because I want to make sure I can take the nitro off of it. I want to make sure I can take the hose off. I won't lose all our pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hook this up and give it whatever pressure this bottle can give. And either we're going to hear it, hopefully not hear it. If we hear it, that's too big of a leak. We don't want to hear it. We just want to see it in the bubbles in the tank. Yeah, I definitely hear it on this one. What the crap? Let's see how bad off this one is. We will not be using this coil. Good grief. This sucker's busted. I can fix that one real quick, but I don't know if there's another leak or not. We already had the pressure on it. Let me go ahead and fix this real quick. Run some solder across it, kind of close the gap. I don't think this was the original leak, or else I don't think that was, well, I don't know if it was the cause of the replacement or not. But if I see a leak like this, now you can fix that, although it looks like breaking along that seam and you fix it, you might have another leak through there eventually. That's pretty wild. All right, let's braze this thing shut and we'll try it again because I've already worked on this coil and we don't want to waste it. I'm not flowing nitrogen so you guys don't get mad at me. Look at that. It is trash. Look how thin that stuff is. Look how thin it is. Whoa. Let's just turn the shit out of it. If I get too close, it won't work. All right. Let's see if I turned it good enough. What kind of brazen was that, man? That wasn't good brazen, man. I know. Y'all can forgive me. So let's get some more pressure on that thing. Let's see if we can blow that shit out the side. We'll watch it. We'll shoot that turret across the room or something. <laughs> I hope that wasn't the only leak on this coil. Man, I'll be disappointed. I don't think we got it. This is a colossal failure. I'm invested in this coil now, guys. I'm invested in this coil. Remember, we'll just turn as much turd on there as possible. Totally rat shit this thing up. Oh, yeah. You can tell this thing's got a problem. If this doesn't fix it, we're going to have to go to a different coil. Just for time's sake. Oh my gosh. Should be cooling down. That is one big old rat turd. All right, we're going to try her again. We're going to put this core back in there. And by the time I'm done brazing and come back over here and do all this stuff, it's going to be cool enough. Of course, you wouldn't throw nitrogen on some joint that's red hot. But by the time I get over here, it's cool enough where it's not going to be a problem. Supposedly. That's 300 pounds right there. We're going to leave it on 300 pounds, and we're going to go outside and take a look at it. 
in the bath. We're looking at the little Z-manifold gauge, and I can already tell you, my little braze joint leaks a little bit on the top, and there's a leak you guys can see down underwater there. I don't know if you guys can see those bubbles appearing right there, if you can. One of those little capillary tubes going from the little distributor device off the orifice going to the coil is actually leaking as well, a little rub through. It's really common with these Goodman coils. You can recognize it as a Goodman coil. So as you can see on the other side, my expert braze is still leaking either from inside that joint or on top of it. So either way, it's definitely leaking a little bit. So I don't know if I should use this coil or not because that's quite a bit of leaking. But that might be a good test for our theory. So maybe we'll use this coil and pick another one out and compare. Let's go see how our coil's doing. It's a horrible day, it's raining. Well, that hasn't changed a whole lot. No, it's probably gone down a little bit. All right. Well, we're going to try to pull a vacuum on this coil. I got to take it out of here, dry it off, probably end up doing this part tomorrow. But you guys will know that because it's on the same video. As you guys can see, we've gone all the way down to below 50 PSI. It's been about four or five days since I started this test. So you can see this would be about a week-long leaker. It would leak out all the charge in the system. But it's a great, great coil for our vacuum experiment. So let's get down to business. I'm going to put another port on here so we can pull a vacuum from both sides. Now that I have sweat on this access point on both sides so we can pull from both sides. The interesting part to this is that both of the leaks on this coil are going to be close to these access points. So I'm thinking the decay will go really quickly back up toward atmosphere. I see right here we have the suction header. On the other side is our leak on the back of this header. Right here we go right into our different capillary tubes. One of those leaks. So it's really close to both of these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pressure check this as far as this fitting just by screwing on my gauge here. Let me screw it on the right direction. I'm from Poland. What does that matter? Nothing. Okay. I'm just going to check for egregious leaks in my joint just as a double check. And so you guys know that I did my due diligence here. That's important. All right, here we go. Up to 50 PSI to 100. We'll stick with 100. See that right there? No sounds. We're looking for bad leaks, so we're looking for sounds. This looks like it's solid. I remembered how to braze. That's good. I'm glad that guy sent us this brazing stuff, these brazing rods, because I was almost out. All right, we're going to turn that off. Let this come out, and then we can get down to pulling the vacuum. Those of us with dirty hands, blood stains and a twine, right away each morning, grinding out another time. The face is in the mirror, not as young as they once were, but they're proud. I have the True Blue vacuum rig hooked up to the leaking A coil. And we're going to start a vacuum here in a second. What we're going to do is we're going to give it a little while, maybe 15 or 20 minutes to see if we can get to 500 microns. If it looks like we're close, we'll let it get down to 500. We'll shut it off and we'll see what kind of decay we get on this leaky, leaky coil. So without further ado, I'm going to fire up the vacuum pump. We're going to turn on the blue vac gauge and get this thing rolling.
I don't know about you guys, but I was pretty surprised by that. One of the things that surprised me is the fact that we could go that low on a vacuum on a coil that would have caused the system to leak all the way out within about a week. That's a huge refrigerant leak in our terms. Even though it's a small leak in the grand scheme of leaks, in the world of refrigeration, that's a big, big leak. So you would not expect a vacuum to be able to pull that low. Now we have a great vacuum rig here in the True Blue stuff. We have no line set, which helps out. But these leaks were also right near these access points, which kind of surprised me as well that we were able to pull that far. And when we got into a decay situation, I think this really, this whole process here really speaks to how important decay really is. Because as you can see, it wasn't like we shut these valves off, isolated the system, and it just shot up to atmosphere all of a sudden. It was pretty slow. It was really slow. In fact, after five minutes, and that's 300 seconds later. Hold on. Yeah, 300. Okay. Yes, 300 seconds later, it was only at around 1,000. So remember, back in the day, I used to say myself, if you're working on an R22 system, evacuate it down to 500 and let it sit for a minute and see if it makes it back to 1,000. Someone that's in a hasteful mood, someone that's in a hurry, might let this go thinking this was good. And this would have leaked out within a week. So guys, I think this is actually a big thumbs up to like the Bluetooth apps AccuTools has, Measure Quick, having that decay on the app, predicting what's going to happen. This is a real thumbs up for that. If we're using our service person's intuition, we may get really, really screwed really bad because this was a huge leak. And you know, it didn't look too awful on the decay to me with my eyes. But to the app and the grand scheme of things, it was a definite fail. So, I want to know what you guys think of this right here. We're going to continue this series. We're going to continue exploring the world of vacuum in a hands-on application. Now, I'm not very good at reading a bunch of books and stuff like that. I like to put my hands on stuff and see how it works so I can show you guys how it works so we can see how it is in the real world. We saw the leaks on the coil. I showed you underwater. You see those leaks are pretty apparent. You can't hear them. They're small enough where you can't hear them under that amount of pressure, but you can see them in the little wash basin. We'll give a nice thank you to True Blue Hoses. They did a great job here. These are the True Blue AccuTools valve core removers. We're using the BlueVac Micro that does hook up to the app. All the BlueVac stuff hooks up to the app now, so know that. Then we have the Yellow Jacket Super Evac Plus 6 CFM pump doing the pumping. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and let's get back to the show.